Hello everyone and welcome to the workshop at Cotswold Bees. Now it's spring here in the UK and when it's spring an old beekeeper's thoughts turn to three things. Tea and cake obviously two of them but the third one possibly more importantly is swarms. Elsewhere on the channel we've put two videos to show you how to manage swarms and as we've described in those videos Every good beekeeper needs to be able to manage swarms. It's good for the bees, it's good for the environment. And if you haven't already seen those videos, I'll put a link in the description below. However, every once in a while, one of two things happen. One is we get it wrong and we lose a swarm. And that happens to every beekeeper, no matter how good they are. The other thing is, our apiaries are very attractive to bees and to swarms, and a swarm of bees from somebody else's hive can move into our apiary. And if that happens, we want to be able to easily move it out of our apiary, just in case it's diseased, to a separate area where we can check them and make sure that they're okay. So in order to do that, we need to build a swarm trap. And swarm traps are really useful things and very, very easy to make. All you need is the following. A box, an old nuke box is brilliant. If you haven't got one, you could either make one or you could even buy one of the cheap Corex nuke boxes that are available. We need some old comb and a frame, and we need some lemongrass oil. And that's all we need to make our swarm trap. So let's go about making it. So here's my old newt box. And this was a method that was recommended to me on a beekeeping lecture a long time ago, and it seems to work very, very well. So we take our newt box, we take an old frame, and this, this frame, as you can see, is quite dark and horrible. It's one that I've actually taken out of a hive that I know is disease-free, no problems with it, but it's got to the stage now where it needs replacing. So I took it out this spring, and I'm going to put that into my nuke box. And then between these two frames, I'm going to put a blank frame with no foundation in. And Finally, I'm going to take another old frame, the old manky old frame that I took out, and I'm going to put that in. So now I've got the advantage of a box that smells of bee. In order to enhance that a little, I'm going to put a few drops of lemongrass oil in. Now, all we need are really three or four drops, and I'm just going to put those onto the comb. You could put them onto the comb before you put them into the box if you want to but I'm just going to put them onto the comb. Now, why lemongrass oil, you might ask? Well, you can buy very expensive swarm lures from the beekeeping suppliers, and they're very, very good. But actually, it's thought that lemongrass oil mimics Nazanoff pheromone. And Nazanoff pheromone is the pheromone that the bees give off to actually attract uh, their bees back to the hive and to show where their queen is. And it's very good at attracting swarms. So there we have it. I've produced my swarm trap. It's as simple as that. All I need to do is put the top back on the box. And if you've got uh, an old mute box that's got a ventilator in the top, what you do need to do is pop a bit of wood on the top and either put a brick on there or put a bit of slate that I've got there on, onto the top just to keep the rain out. Now we've got the box. It's all ready. We need to put it out. Where's the best place to put it? Well, swarms naturally go to something that's roughly eight to 10 feet in the air. So on top of a shed, on top of a single story building, you could even make a bracket and attach it to a tree. Anything like that's a really good place. We're actually gonna put this one on the top of Cotswold Bees HQ because we do get swarms moving in here from other apiaries around the area and it's good to be able to catch them and then take them straight out to the isolation apiary. What we'll do now is having got the swarm trap ready, we'll go out to HQ and we'll go out and we'll put it up on the roof and show you how we actually organise it there. Here we are then out at Cotswold Bees HQ and I've got my swarm trap. Now when I put it up, beekeepers will argue long into the night as to which way it should actually face. I'm not too excited about that. All I want to do is I want to face it away from the prevailing wind. So the entrance here I'm gonna make sure isn't pointing into the prevailing wind. But other than that, I'm not gonna to get too emotional about it. So there we go. Let's go and put it on top of the roof. I've got my ladders here. I can go up and I've got a nice tricorn ladder here, so it's nice and safe. And up we go. Uh, 
and I'm simply going to place the swarm trap on top of the roof. And it can sit there all summer or until it catches a swarm, whichever happens first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make absolutely certain that regularly I look up at it. If I see a few bees going in and out, they're probably scout bees, and that means that I'm likely to get a swarm very, very soon. If I've got lots of bees going in and out, I've probably caught my swarm, and if that's the case, I'll wait until the evening, put a bit of foam rubber in the entrance, and I can take the swarm trap away to somewhere nice and safe. So there it is. We've got lots of these out amongst our apiaries to catch swarms, and we catch quite a number of swarms every year. Hope that's been useful. If you really liked it, then please give us a thumbs up and hopefully subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. And here's to a very non-swarmy season and hope you enjoy your beekeeping. <laughs>